Let's take a couple minutes to review what we've learned so far in this module. We're working with web forms, and we've learned that there are several different types of controls that we can add to a form and widgets. We learned that each input element has a field, and the field is where the data is stored. And each field has a name and a value. And when that form is processed, that name value pair is sent. So that for each element, it has a name and a value and for the field, and that information is sent. Um, the form can be processed either by the user's computer or by a server. And it just depends on how the form is set up, which will happen, where the code to process it is located. To add a form to an HTML page, we need to use the form element. And we learned that the form element didn't actually show up on the web page, but that it was a way to group things together and keep everything contained. There's some attributes we want to add to the form element. We want to add an ID attribute so that we can uniquely identify this particular form. We want to add the action attribute. And what the action attribute does is lets us put a URL of where the code on the server will be. So this is actually to call the code to process the server. So we put the entire URL, including the protocol, HTTP colon slash slash. There might be an S there. Whatever it is, you want to make sure you have the complete URL. We want to do the method um, attribute. And the method attribute has two options, a get and post. And these are two different methods for submitting the data, the form data. And if it's in, if you use the get method, then it sends the value, the every field's name and value pair through the URL. If you use the post method, then it sends those name value pairs through a separate data stream. And one thing that's real important about this is that when you have some private data that you don't want to be publicly visible, you for sure use the post. Get puts it right in the URL so anybody can see it. Because this is actually not a real server that will handle the form that we're developing we're, for this activity, we're going to use a JavaScript file that will catch the form and process it. All it's going to do is tell us whether the values have been entered correctly. So to add a JavaScript form, a JavaScript file, we need to connect it. So in the HTML, in the head section, we're going to add this script tag. And in the source attribute of the script tag, you put the location of the file. And between the opening and closing script tag, you don't put anything at all. Then we added some field sets. And field sets draw lines, right? It's a way to group elements together. So group some of these controls and widgets together. And it draws a line around them. And, and it, um, you add an ID to identify it. And you add a legend. And the legend is actually the label that goes right on the line. Then we learned about an input element and that an input element, we still use a name and that's going to be the field name and it's going to be the name that is sent with each with the name value pair for this particular element and then the ID that uniquely identifies this element. We, then the type attribute we add to input and this makes a huge difference because based on the type is what kind of control or widget we're going to get and there are lots of type Lots of types, and each one adds something a little bit different. It also changes what the virtual keyboard will be used. And this is something, when you're working on a computer, that won't make any difference. But if you're working on a mobile device, like a phone or a tablet, that uses a virtual keyboard, uh, based on this type, it will put up a different keyboard for different kinds of input elements. We talked about how to label each element. So, And to do that, we use the label tag. And we add the for attribute. And the value of the for attribute is the ID of the matching input element. And then whatever words you put between the opening and closing tag is what will be displayed for the label. Designing a form is the next section. And this is, talks about how you lay it out, what things look like, where you set the font. And for this, uh, we're using a flex layout. But 
Creating a flex layout is covered in Tutorial 5, and Tutorial 5 is not actually covered in this course. So this code has been provided for you in the starter files. The value attribute uh, it identifies if we want to set a default value. So if you don't want an initial value, you don't need to include this attribute. But if you want an initial value, and this will be the default value that will be used automatically if the user doesn't input anything. And it will be, and it will be um, the field, right? That's the value that will be stored in the field. And it actually shows up in the input element so the user can see that that's the current value. You can use a placeholder attribute. This one doesn't actually fill it with a value, but it just puts a message, usually a hint. So it's some kind of hint that you can put in the input box and it'll show up and it displays in the input element, but it is not the value and it won't be sent. And when the user types, it goes away. We learned a few kinds of different controls. We used, learned about the text box control and that type is text and it just simply displays a text input box and it uses the standard virtual keyboard. We learned about the TEL control and this is used for a phone number input and it uses the numeric virtual keyboard. We learned about the email control and it looks like a text input box as well and it's used for email input and it displays a text keyboard, but this text keyboard has the at sign and sometimes a dot com button. So that's what we've learned so far in this activity.